are in 2 Kings today. 2 Kings chapter 4, and then we're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 8. So if you have your Bibles, tablets, phones, you turn to 2 Kings. So Father, we again thank you for today. We thank you for what you are doing. We thank you for how you're breaking through and encouraging and building us and what you are revealing to us today. Thank you for new revelation and deeper understanding. Thank you for truth that unfold that we can embrace and apply to a daily life. And most of all, just thank you for you and how you will reveal yourself in your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Who does not want to be blessed? Anybody? Anybody does not want to be blessed? No, I don't think I think so. Everybody wants to be blessed by God, right? Yes. Everybody wants a blessing of sort. Here's the thing. God wants to break through in our lives to give us those blessings, to be a blessing. Now, blessing can look in different ways and take different shapes. But God wants to be the blessing and release blessings in our lives. And I think all of us want to be blessed, right? But there's a part we have to play. And, you know, we, last month or so, we, the theme has been about obedience as those words were released over us. So what part do we continue to play in order to receive that blessing from God? we said this before, honor unlocks the kingdom of God. When we honor each other, we open up God, the kingdom of heaven, to work in the person that we honor. Because we're, when we honor them, we're doing it God's way. Well, it also applies to honoring God with our lives as well. Psalm 37, 4 through 5, which is probably my favorite verse in the Bible, simply says this, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So, delight yourself in the Lord. Let God be your focus, and he will give you the desires of your heart. How does that work? Well, it's a simple shift. If God is my focus, the desires of my heart will line up with the desires that he has for me. So then they become my desires. Because they're the correct desires I should have. Right? So then he will release them into my life. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. And he will bring it to pass. So he'll make it happen when I commit my way to the Lord. Now, beautiful verse. I love this verse. And it has a lot of meaning to me personally. But... What, how does the words and the, the statement depicted play out in our lives every day? Well, I want to read a story here. In 2 Kings, beginning chapter 4, 18 through 17. This is a story that happened with Elisha. Elisha was Elijah's uh, assistant for a long time. Remember, Elisha was just a plain old farmer. God released an anointing on him. He came underneath Elijah the prophet, learned from him, and then when Elijah was taken up to heaven, double portion of Elijah's blessing came on Elisha. He asked for it, and he got it. And he got the anointing and gifting to be a prophet like Elijah. So we start verse 8. Now it happened one day, that Elisha went to Shunem, it's a city, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. So she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please, let us make a small upper room 
on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand so it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. Simple. Elisha the prophet passes by Shunem back and forth, going to different regions of Israel and Judah to <coughs> minister, to prophesy, to encourage, admonish, edify, whatever you want to call it. And he would always pass by. She would honor him and feed him. Come, have, have dinner with us. And then she talked to her husband into building him a little room in their house. So when he passed by, he can actually stay there and rest from his journey. Doesn't need to pay for a hotel, doesn't need to sleep on the sand, but he can have a place to stay. And it happened, beginning verse 11, one day that he came there and he turned in to the upper room and laid down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, so remember, Elisha used to be Elijah's servant. Now that Elisha is the prophet, he needed an assistant. Gehazi was his assistant. So he turned to his assistant, Gehazi, call this Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said to her, say now to her, and, she, and he said to him, say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. You've been so good to us. You've taken care of us so, so well. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? Do you want, so he, he's saying, do you want me to use my notoriety to get something good for you? You want me to tell the king how awesome you are and have him do some stuff for you? What do you need? Listen to her response. I dwell among my own people. I live in this town. And Gazi answered. And so he said, what then is to be done for her? So she said, I'm living among my own people. I've got nothing that I want. I'm happy here. I'm content. I may not be super rich, but I have a nice home. I have a husband that I love. I'm surrounded by family and friends. I live a simple life, but content. What do I need? Humility and honor. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. Hmm. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. And then he said, about this time next year, you will embrace the son. Mm. Remember, a son brings honor to the family. I want you to think about that. In the Jewish culture of the day, not having son dishonors the woman. They never blame the man. It's never the father's fault. Even if it's the father that might be might have been impotent, it's the woman that is dishonored. Hmm. Okay? So I want you to think about her mentality. She's saying, I'm happy the way I am. I'm happy here. Even though people dishonor her to some degree because she does not have a son, an heir. Remember Hannah with Samuel, how people dishonored her and she cried to God at the temple all the time. Give me a son, and if you give me a son, I will dedicate him to you. So God blessed her with Samuel, and she dedicated him to, the, to God and gave him to Eli the priest to raise and serve in the temple when he was weaned off of her. So this was her glory. Her, a son is a mother's glory, and it's honor. So, he's, so Elisha says, let honor her with a child, son. So obviously he didn't do it on his own. He talked to the Lord about it. And he said to her, next time, this time next year, you will embrace the son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. Don't play this game with me. Please don't build my hopes up. Don't tell me something that's going to get me excited only to let me down. 
because she's thinking, my husband's old. My husband's old. So is Abraham, by the way. <laughs> she yeah. remember. Yeah. And I had never had a son. But the one woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her. So, again, how does this play out with obedience? Sometimes obedience isn't about, hey, could you do this for me? And you say, yes, I will, and get it done. Sometimes obedience is that thing within us that just simply knows this is what I'm supposed to be doing. No one has to say, can you go clean your room? And you say, yes, mom or dad, I'll go clean my room. That's obedience, right? But sometimes obedience is just knowing from within it's just the right thing to do. It's just the good thing to do. It's just the honoring thing to do. So what happens here? This woman, I want you to just really picture this. Sees this prophet coming into town all the time. And she's looking around and sees that he's sleeping on the dirt. She's seeing that he's having to pay for food and scraping because they weren't making money. He wasn't making money. He was a farmer who left his farm to be a prophet of God. So his whole livelihood was based on the blessing and honoring from other people. So she said, what can we do to help him? Well, at the very least, we can feed him when he comes by every time. But then, her heart was open more and said, you know what? Let's do a little more than that because it's just the right thing to do. It's great to feed him, but after he eats dinner, he's going to sleep on the street. Or in a barn. Or under a tree. Let's build him something. Let's honor him. Honor him the man of God. So her focus was on honoring God by honoring his prophet. That was her focus. Honoring God by honoring the prophet. Just simply doing the right thing out of the goodness that is within her to honor God. That's obedience. That's called also being a good person. But when the focus is God, it's a different thing. There's a scripture that says, when you honor a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. Mm. And she got the prophet's reward. Because she honored God's prophet by honoring God first. She would never have done this if she did not honor God. She was content with her land. Even giving up on, on having a son. That's why she said, don't, don't say these things to me. That alone denotes what I tried, I tried, I tried for years. And now I'm, I'm just done. I, I don't want to get my hopes up anymore. I, I've come to a place where I'm at peace at the fact I've never had a <coughs> son. And people can look at me, put me down, say things to me about me, and it does not bother me anymore. Because I at that place where I'm okay with it. This is just who I am. She never once mentioned wanting a son. Never once did that come up. But there was somebody who knew her heart. God knew her heart. He knew her heart's desire and he revealed it to God. He knew that this was the one thing in her life that she's always wanted. This was the one thing that would completely bless her. She never mentioned it when he said, should I talk to the king? What do you want? And this is where the payoff for delighting yourself in the Lord comes in. Because what did she do? She delighted herself in the Lord. That's all. That's all she did. 
She wasn't asking God for things. She was just delighting herself to be with God. We forget about that. You know, do not mistake loving God and loving the things God does as the same. Because they're not. We are honored. We are blessed by what God does for us. But we're not supposed to love those things. We're supposed to love Him. We love God. And then all those things become the blessing, the overflow for us being in relationship with God. Right? That's how where it flows from. So she had a son. Well, something happened to the son, and I'm going to let you read the story from there. But I will paraphrase what happened to you today. The son grew up a little bit. He was playing with his dad. He was out in the field. He fell down. He had hem in his head. Had a brain hemorrhage. They carried him back. When they brought him to his mom, the same woman, you know what she did? She told him, put him up in the prophet's room. And she said, get my horse. I'm going to go find the prophet. They tried to tell her he's dead. And she said, no. I'm going to go get the prophet. And she went and found Elisha. And I'm making a very longer story short. And I'm going to let you read it for yourself. And the prophet came. And she said, go and wake my son up. Her faith was at that level. Why? Because she delighted herself in the Lord and the Lord revealed himself to her. Amen. And do you think God was going to give her a son so that seven years later, nine years later, whatever it was, he was going to just take him away from her? And say, ha, 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 got you. Fooled you. That's not what God does. But you see, you saw her spiritual character, that same character that was the foundation of why she built that room for the prophet. Because she simply delighted herself in the Lord. She got that prophet back. She brought Elijah, sent him upstairs. And Elijah laid on her son and breathed light back to him. She trusted in God and took action. She did not even mourn. Why? Because she, did, she believed in whom she loved. She loved God and had that relationship. And God honored her by restoring her son back to her. But do you think the story's over? No. It's, it, it goes on. God wants to give you the desires of your heart. But it comes with delighting myself in Him first. Everything lines up when I am lined up with God. 2 Kings chapter 8. I love this. A famine hit the land as a backdrop. A few years later, there was a famine. Chapter 8, 1 through 6. Then Elisha spoke to the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can. For the Lord has called for a famine, and furthermore, it will come upon the land for seven years. So the woman arose and did according to the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and dwelt in the land of the Philistines seven years. 
This is important, guys. He said household, not her husband and son. You know what it includes? Those who work for her. So she was, may not have been super rich, but she had a little bit of money. So she had people who worked for her. So she, she took care of everyone that was under her. And Elisha said, go to the land of Philistines for seven years till this is over. So it came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines, again, following God's direction. And she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and her land. Then the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, please, all the great things Elisha had done. So what's going on here? We're reading the story within the lines that are being shared. She has come back from the Philistine land after seven years. What's happened? There were people who took residence in her home. They kind of just jumped in and decided to make it their own. They said, it's an abandoned home, it's our house now. She's gone seven years, it was deserted. So now she's going to the king to appeal, hey king, I need to get back to my home. Could you help me get these people out? And it just so happened that Elisha's servant Gehazi was hanging out with the king. By chance, right? I don't think so. <laughs> and the king asked him, tell me about Elisha. Tell me what he's been up to. Tell me some of the amazing stories God did through Elisha. So then the, verse 4, then the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, please tell me all the great things Elisha has done. Now it happened, as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead to life, and there was the woman whose son he had restored to life, appealing to the king for her house and her land. And Gehazi said, my lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored. Talk about a testimony. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed, appointed a certain officer for his saying, Restore all that was hers, and all of the proceeds of the field from the day she had left the land until now. Amen. Restore her back everything Amen. that the enemy tried to take from her. Any person who moved in, uh, I'm losing my thought as to what the word is, uh, of somebody just taking over your house. Kind of Squatter. Squatter. Squatter, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I had a tip of my tongue. Remember. But yes, the squatters who took over. Any any money they made off her land, give it back to her, restore it all to her. Everything that was lost to her, bring back. What did God do? He not only protected her family during the famine by getting the heads up from Elisha to go and protect her family. Remember, she's been honoring him all these years. So God honored her back. But then when she came back and thought all was lost, perfect timing, while Gehazi was spitting out words of how Elijah restored a young boy back to life who had a hemorrhage, brain hemorrhage. Oh, that's the kid, right there. God is faithful. God is faithful. He protected her and her home from family. Then he restored the land back to her by Elisha and Gehazi having Gehazi speaking to the king directly. Direct testimony of her obedience and her honor. Obedience is the avenue to God's protection and covering. Let me say that again. Obedience is the avenue to God's protection and covering. Everything we read about this woman, she did exactly what she was told by God to do. 
and what she wasn't told by God to do. She knew how to do the right thing because of her relationship with God where she did not need a prophet to say, go here and go there. She just knew in her spirit, in her heart, in her soul, it was the right thing to do. Some of us would walk by someone who is ask, on the street asking for food and would know the right thing to do is to give them food, give them something to eat. But you know what? Not every person starving looks like a homeless person. When you're connected to God, they're called words of knowledge. They're called, it's called the Holy Spirit speaking in your soul and telling you and hearing from God, God saying, well, go do this. And you're like, why? And you, but you just do it because you know it's God speaking to you about it. It does not make sense, but you know God is speaking to you. And what do we know? Obedience keeps the devourer from devouring. Obedience restores what the enemy tries to take. Obedience preserves our destiny, what God has for us. Remember Matthew 6.33? Seek first the kingdom of God and and his righteousness. Have your motives be about what, about God's kingdom and then stay in the right standing with God. Because I can think about God's kingdom and not be in right standing. I can have, quote, good intentions and not follow through and be in the right standing. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Stay in right standing. Then and all these things will be added unto you. She sought the kingdom of God. How did she seek the kingdom of God? By staying close to God and just knowing her spirit and her heart from day one. It's a right thing to do. The Bible also says, he who's faithful and little will be given more, right? So she was faithful with little. What little? Let me feed this prophet of God. I want to honor him. Let me now go to the first next step and build him a room. And that built a relationship that took her even deeper with God. And then all these things were added unto her by Elisha telling her, you better get out of here for seven years. And she honored God by taking her servants, taking her whole household. And then when she came back, there was God right there honoring her again with all these things that were being added to him. She was just going to say, hey man, can I just have my house back? And there she goes. She had a personal tech lawyer standing right there to attest for her. What is added are the natural outcomes of God doing things in excellence. Did you get that? The added things, all these things that will be added unto you, are not done halfway. It, these added things are natural outcomes of God doing what he does with excellence. A perfect God coming through in perfect ways. She simply wanted her house back, her land back. We may ask for specific things, but when everything else is lined up in our relationship with God the correct way, the outcome will have a multiple impact. She wanted her land back. God gave her land back and any money that was made off of her land while she was away was restored to her. We may ask for an apple, but God sees how nurturing an apple tree would be to provide and benefit and blessing. Amen. This is the God we serve. Right now, 
many of us might be in that place where we're struggling with that, where we're kind of on our way to the king to ask for our land back, not sure what the outcome's going to be. We wonder what God's going to restore. What even God restored? She had no guarantees. The king, because we knew the prior king was not a godly man, the king could have said, you abandoned your country. You abandoned your people. I'm not giving you anything back. I'm not going to help you at all. But she still had the faith to step up and go to the king. And say, Lord, show up and show up big. That's kind of been my, my words for me to God. Show up and show up big. Hmm. And show off. Amen. So would you stand with me? So Lord, we just come to you right now. Some of us are at various places that was revealed through your word about where the Shunammite woman was at different stages of her life. Some of us may have been pre-birth of our son. Some of us may be where she was when she was in the land of the Philistine. Some of us may be where she was when she was on her way to the king. But whatever place we're at, Lord, may we simply be content. with a heart that desires to seek you. Help us right now to grow so close to you, to truly delight ourselves practically with you and what that looks like for every single one of us. And we would just simply do what honors you. For some, it may take a deeper measure of faith, to step out in faith. For some today, it was to literally take that one step forward as if we're stepping into your pool. Whatever it looks like, Lord, would you just get us to that place where we say, yes, Lord. I want to commune with you deeply and to know your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Then can you come and Take a little bit from Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, if there's any doubt, any fear, any wavering in our hearts, Lord, we just lay that at your feet right now. We just say sorry. We just simply say sorry. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive me. Any thoughts? That, if, uh, that I've allowed to enter my mind. Whether I've opened a door to demonic thoughts or they were my own emotionally driven thoughts. I repent for my emotionally driven thoughts and I repent for opening that door and I shut that door in Jesus' name right now. And I say no. And I ask you to reveal to me right now. Speak to me your truth. Show me your truth, Lord, of what you want to say about me and to me. Just listen, guys. Just listen right now. What do you want to tell me, Lord?
Ask the full worship team to come back up. And in a moment, I want to go back into your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. I want that to be our closing anthem today. I just want you to make sure you do what you need to do with Jesus right now.